All right, what I got going on here. This is a 1973 something. It's a 13 foot boat. And as you can see back here, I've already took the rotten wood out of the transom. And I'm going to be replacing that. I've actually got the piece in there partially done. And I'm going to show you that here in a minute. Now this boat had one of the worst paint jobs that you have ever seen in your life. I mean, it, it was horrible. It's just a boat and it needs to float, but I just couldn't stand to look at this thing. So what I've been doing here, you can see down the side of it, I've been sanding it. There were like these hideous runs and dirt in that paint job. You can see right there where I've tried to sand them down. I've seen some really bad paint jobs in my day, but I've never seen anything worse than this. I'm gonna to try to clean up the paint on the outside of it. I'm just gonna use a roller, and then I might come behind it and uh, do a camo job on it. Now, the transom they had in it was a hack job like the rest of the boat. So I didn't trace it. I used some cardboard and made my own pattern and cut it, trimmed it, and took my time. And I took two pieces of three quarter inch plywood and I've glued them together. I've used Type Bond too. This stuff, it's made to withstand water. I've used it on birdhouses and other wood projects that are outside and it holds up pretty darn good. So the glue's dry. I've already got it glued together. I gotta get these clamps off of it. As you can see, I clamped the heck out of it. Now this is not marine plywood. This is box store BC exterior type plywood. I laid the two pieces apart from each other and just poured glue on it. And I used one of these Bondo squeegees and, and just kind of smoothed it out on both of them. Nice thin layer on both pieces. I let it set for a few minutes and then I came back. I put them both together. I had some relief holes and you could see one place where the glue actually came up out of it, but I got my glue just right to where it didn't ooze out too bad and it didn't create a puddle in the middle. But what I did is I, I drilled holes, some pilot holes, and I ran screws down the middle of it first and then I worked my way out to the edge. That way, the glue that was in the middle, screw it down, pushed it out, put some screws a little bit closer to the edge on both sides, pushed it out some more, and then I clamped her down with those clamps around the edges. You can see I used a lot of clamps. The edge is the important part of it. You don't want it to pull apart out there and dry. And if you don't have clamps all the way around it, you'll have a place where it'll separate. So there's my board. One and a half inches thick, three quarters and three quarters. So what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna fill these holes with some Bondo, and then I'm gonna clean this glue off of the edges all around it. And then I'm gonna use some resin, fiberglass resin, then I'm gonna cover this whole thing with front, back, tops, and sides, the whole thing. Now, if there's any places like this, I'm gonna go ahead and bondo those up too. I want a nice flat surface to put this resin over top of so I can seal this thing up and make it watertight. I'm just using regular body filler. 
This is not submerged. This will get wet if I get caught out in the rain. And if the boat's properly stored in the winter time, the plug's out, you're not letting it fill up with water, this thing should last a really long time. I'm just concerned about it lasting me the rest of my life. After that, somebody else ends up with it. They can either take care of it or they can do what I'm going to do. They can watch my video and do this. Put one across it like that. This should dry pretty fast. So I'm going to have to be pretty quick about it. All right. These are the spots that I'm worried about right there. So I'm going to fill them. There's one there. Lay it down so you can see. Fill them screw holes on the top of it. All right. I got me about four ounces of it there. Let's see how far that goes. I've sanded it with 80 grit. I came back around and rounded these corners off a little bit. I took a tack rag and I wiped it off. They tell you in instructions to use acetone to wipe it down, but I don't have any. And I'm gonna try a foam roller on this. Got four ounces, I need 40 drops of hardener. There's 40. And we're gonna stir it up real good. I'm not using any glass on here. I'm just using this to seal it up. I ended up putting one coat on each side of it. Later on, I gel coat it. That seemed like it would be plenty, but I recommend that you would go back over it if you're not gel coating it to put two coats of resin over top of this. Now, I don't have a lot of money to put in this thing. I'm not rich. I don't make any money off YouTube. So I'm going to fix these holes the best I can. Now, these are below and pretty close to being below the water line. These three right here and those two holes down there. So I'm going to use what I have to try to fix them. I've got some fiberglass mat and some resin and I'm going to fill them holes and hopefully that'll be enough to make it last a few years. Oh man, now, the deeper I get into this, the worse that it seems to get. Down in this area right here, there were little pinholes. So what I did, cleaned it up, got all the paint off of it, and I used fiberglass mat to cover them up. I've got all my holes plugged and I've kind of straightened out the upper half of it with some Bondo just for cosmetic looks of it. Now the thing that I've learned over the years of doing body work, I started out doing rust repair, was that as long as you can prevent the water from getting behind it, which caused the rust to begin with, and it's going to be the same thing for corrosion or whatever you want to call it with aluminum. Unless you repair that, it's just going to come back. So I know how that water got there and how it's laying there. And I'm going to seal it up from the inside to try to prevent that from happening. That way, there's no way that this will ever fail on me. I'm going to cover this whole thing like I did with the plywood. I'm going to use the fiberglass resin and I'm going to roll it all on there and roll this whole back panel and then I'm going to put a gel coat on it. That should seal the outside of it from any water being able to get to it on this side of it. Now on the inside, behind my transom board, there's a quarter inch piece of aluminum that's pretty much shaped like this and you can see where it goes down here this is open this wasn't sealed at all that is where the water is getting behind it and laying there and it has no chance to dry out especially with the old transom board they had it went clear down to the floor 
it was soaked all the time so it had plenty of water to keep it soaked up under there i've raised this up a couple of inches off of the bottom i'm going to seal this off with some marine sealer and that's going to prevent the water from getting behind this quarter inch piece of aluminum now another thing i had found this is the old bracket that came off of it and you can see how much hell this thing's been through but what happened here is this is where they had four bolts that came up to hold it on there and you can see what it's done it's rotted through that aluminum down there but this is what i'm going to use to support the transom back here so what i'm going to do i got this piece of aluminum i'm going to use marine epoxy and I'm just going to epoxy this plate down to that and cover those holes and then go on the bottom side and fix it there. And then I've got another piece that I'm going to lay back here for these to set on evenly. I don't want to drill any holes in this area here. I'll be able to mount this here and then back there. And then just two bolts through the transom to support it up here. From the inside out, I've re-drilled all my holes that I'm wanting to use for the jack plate, the handles, and the transom supports. I've applied a coat of resin over the entire back panel, sanded it with 80 grit sandpaper, and ready for the next step. Okay, I'm gonna put a gel coat on it now. This is what I'm using. Total Boat Gel Coat. I'm going to use a brush and brush it on there. But anyway, the key to this is you got to stir it and stir it and stir it and stir it. And then when you think you're done stirring it up, stir it up some more. Very important. I've already prepped it. I've sanded it with some 80 grit by hand. I came back with a uh, tack rag, tacked it off. I wiped it down with some, uh, it's a solution of water and Dawn soap that I use. They recommend acetone for everything on these things, but I can't afford the chemicals for one. And I'm old school. I think soap and water is just plenty enough for prepping any paint job. I mixed up enough gel coat so I could do my jack plate board and my transom board as well. I sanded it back with some 80 grit sandpaper, applied a second coat of gel coat. I sanded it back again with some 80 grit and I put some white etching primer over top of it that I had left over in the shop. You'll see that I've used some different primer when I show you how I painted the sides. Here I'm wiping it down with the tack rag and getting ready to put some paint on it. Again, I'm just using a roller and some forest green rusty oleum. Everything that I've painted on this boat, I've sanded with a DA and 80 grit sandpaper. Nothing any finer than that. And I'm telling you, once you prime it and put a flat paint on it with a roller, you're not going to find the sand scratches unless you get in there with a microscope. I'm not painting a showboat. I just want it to look halfway decent when the fish come up the side of it and... I just want those fish to be, wow, look at that boat. <laughs> I scrubbed the boat down with Dawn soap and water and a scuff pad. Rinsed it off real good, let it dry overnight. Then I took a tack rag and primed it. I let the primer dry for an hour or so, and then I took the roller to it. The paint that I'm using is Rust-Oleum Forest Green. It's one of their camo colors that they've got out. Everything's prepped and painted and sealed up and ready to go at this point. It's time to put the transom together. 
This backsplash is some scrap that I picked up from the sign shop and fabricated it and cut it to fit. I took a clothes hanger, got a little bit of silicone on it. I went up inside here and just kind of wetted the inside of this a little bit. Just on these four down here, these are going to get a lot of water. I'm using an exterior 100% clear silicone. I think the name brand is GE. I picked it up at the Home Depot. It was about $15 for the tube of it. And don't get too sloppy with it because you can't paint over this stuff. Okay, the last thing I've got, everything's tightened down. This brace that's going to go right here. I've got this area prepped. We'll let that dry a little bit and then I'm ready to epoxy these plates down to there and then bolt the front of it here and pop rivet those two in there. So it's going to be kind of permanent once I do this. This is a picture of the rivet I'm using. It's a quarter inch. I don't know what size that shank is, but I know it's a fairly large one. I had to buy that special rivet tool to pop these things with. And it, you can see it takes a lot of effort to do it. But there's no hole going up through the bottom of it, so it's completely sealed down there. But I still went down there with some epoxy on the other side and covered it up to make sure that there wasn't going to be any water passing through it. Once that was done, it was just a matter of bolting the front of it to the transom and pretty much finished from there and the final touch this is my HIN number this plate was made for me by Division of Wildlife Watercraft that makes it a real boat again If you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some good information out of it. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button on the way out and join the channel. I got lots of videos up there. If you hit that notification bell, you get notified as soon as I put them up. If you're working on one of these boats, you got to put your transom in it. It's rotted out. Have fun. Ha, 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 ha.